Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer behind the YouTube channel Nonconformist Conscience and also the webpage <clears throat> nonconformistconscience.com. This week is the week before next week's lunar eclipse happening at 14 degrees Scorpio, which I am going to talk about in detail next week. I'm also going to post a video of a show that I'm doing this weekend where I'm going to be talking about this eclipse as well. But I wanted to bring this up because we are still in this eclipse window and eclipses happen in the spring and in the fall and they represent a six month period of time where we can be at an evolutionary juncture and it speaks to on the one hand the solar eclipse is a place of integration and a, on the other hand the lunar eclipse is a place of culmination of our emotional dynamics that are surfacing in order for the integration to occur and this is the week in between these two eclipses that set the stage for the next six month period of time and so it's really important to keep this information in mind while i am talking about the transits for this week it's also really important for me to point out that this eclipse that is happening next week is really for we know that pluto is the soul and we know that a generation has pluto in a specific sign <clears throat> individually that pluto will fall into a house for those born in 1989, our Plutos are at 14, 15 degrees, you know, in this area where the lunar eclipse is going to occur. And so it's really important for us to understand this and also to understand that those of us born in that year and that time frame also have Chiron and Cancer. And so there's a lot of activation of wounds as transiting Chiron has been aspecting, you know, our natal Chirons. It's kind of out of that area now, but it is definitely um, still in this activation process. And so for those who are born around this time, this is something to keep in mind as well. If you have anything in the fixed signs at 14 degrees, a little before and a little after, so that would be Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, and Leo, this is going to really pack a punch for all of us who have something in those fixed signs around these degrees. So without further ado, let me jump into this week's astrology. This is going to be pertinent for everyone on a collective level. And these things could be aspecting your own natal chart. So let me begin. So today on Thursday, Uranus and Taurus is in a semi-sextile in a new phase to Venus and Mercury. Uh, I mean, to Venus and Gemini, sorry. And G v Venus and Mercury are in mutual reception, meaning that they both rule each other. And Uranus is ruled by this Venus that it's semi-sextiling. So there is some information for us to gather about what this really means. What is wanting to come up? how we can consciously utilize this energy. So Uranus in, in Taurus, as I have been stating for, man, it feels like forever for me since it's been in this sign, is really about this radical alteration of how we inwardly relate. So it's like challenging our inner status quo of our relationship with ourself, really looking at 
where we've over identified with certain things in our lives that are revolving around our needs, how we communicate with ourselves, our internal dialogue, our uh, values, and our values shape our beliefs. And so if we're dealing with our, our relationship with self, we can see that with this particular conversation, something around our internal dialogue can be coming up. And with a semi-sextile in a new phase, there is an inner friction that can occur in order to kind of get us to want to get more to the bottom of it. So this can also be external events being triggered revolving around these archetypal themes that I'm going to be discussing in this particular conversation. And this, the conversations I talk about that are going on with these planets this week is going to be felt all this week. It's, you know, it's going to be residual things that we need to be consciously working with. So Uranus semi-sextile to Venus in a new phase really speaks to, there has been a time period where we have been working on listening to the inner voice as a way to create objectivity so that way we can challenge our own inner status quo and really rebel and evict certain dynamics within ourselves that have affected our self-esteem and the way we feel about ourselves, how we value ourselves. So this is a time period where we could really start to be getting in touch with our inner dialogue through this inner friction that this new face in my sextile is, you know, having come up within us. The new face in my sextile also denotes that we've been working on this for a while, but it hasn't been fully integrated yet. And so with Venus being ruled by Mercury in the sign of Taurus and retrograde, in combination with the semi-sextile, we know with retrogrades that it's threes, repeat, relive, redo in order to resolve. So there is something here that we're wanting to resolve and that there is an inner friction occurring within regarding how we're inwardly relating to ourselves, something that we've been working towards. And now something can be coming up and resurfacing for us to redo. And this can revolve around our communication skills and especially how we are inwardly communicating with ourselves. With Mercury retrograde ruling this Venus, there can be this experience of inertia, of a loss of words, or it can also be an intensification on needing to tap into the intuition about what is wanting to surface and then to be objective about the feelings that are coming up. Because Uranus is in this mix, and it's ruled by Venus, and Venus and Mercury are in mutual reception, there's a need to be curious about this. There's a need to make a choice as to how to go about moving forward. And there's a need for objectivity in regard to this. Okay, I had a, a child knee me for a second. Sorry. So there's a little time gap here. So I was talking about, I had to pause that and now you guys get it. Anyway, I'm sure there's mothers who are watching this. So there's this need to really be objective and to make a choice about being curious and being objective about the feelings that arise through an inner friction and to really observe how we are talking to ourselves because it's going to point to what we are needing what needs revolve around how we are inwardly communicating and for some there needs to be a shift on how we are inwardly communicating with ourselves 
The words you speak to yourself have power. And it's really looking at, with your honest, this conditioning of where we have over-identified with some aspect about ourselves. And if we're looking at conditioning, this can be looking at where we have been conditioned or how we've been conditioned to value ourselves and where trauma may have occurred in regard to that. And so this is a really good time to be really aware and objective about the things that you say to yourself. Are you having negative self-talk? There is a need to be objective about how this correlates to how you value yourself and to learn new ways of inwardly expressing yourself and communicating to yourself in a better and more positive way that promotes self-validation and healthy self-esteem. And so this is really correlating and looking at experiences of trauma from the past. It's Uranus. And with Mercury being in Taurus and in mutual reception with Venus in Gemini, there can be situations that arise where we have a external event trigger a feeling inside of us and to really pay attention to how we are eat. It, it, there's a need to see if we're we're projecting the past dynamics and it is creating a situation of negative self-talk. So that can be something gets triggered. Maybe you're doing some type of work or you're not able to communicate something very well. It is Mercury retrograde. And the communication... You know, maybe you send a text to someone you didn't want to send a text to. Maybe you put your foot in your mouth and it, you know, all of a sudden you're feeling guilt or you are feeling um, shame about it. And so it's triggering a trauma response from the past of past shame or past trauma and to really look at the ways in which we are talking to ourselves through that. Are you telling yourself you're stupid? You shouldn't have done that. Or are you able to, you know, give yourself grace and say, I made a mistake. There's like this whole conversational dynamic within the planets right now that is really speaking to getting to know oneself deeply. And that means really being objective, even about the parts of ourselves that we really don't want to look at, how we're valuing ourselves, what type of self-esteem that we have, where we find our self-worth, is it affecting our self-reliance or our resilience? This is, you know, um, looking at with Uranus and Mercury being pulled into this, this is looking at short-term and long-term memory. So it is the need to be objective about, is this a projection or is this actually a fact? Is this an opinion? That's an, a conditioned opinion about myself where I've bought into a belief about myself and now I am talking to myself and it really shows me how I am valuing or the lack of value I have for myself. It. So this is this time to really be observing this. And I don't want to generalize this because this isn't going to be across the board, but it's this flavor of needing to be objective about how we talk to ourselves, how we deal with events that get triggered and what is the internal dialogue going on and does it need to be readjusted? Do we need to learn better ways to communicate inwardly? with how we talk to ourselves in order to promote a healthier self-esteem? Are we needing to look at value? How does your self-worth affect the way that you internally speak to yourself? And what does that sound like? And to be objective about it. So it's really, really looking at this in order to liberate from these types of dynamics. 
Then on Friday, we have Mars in a first quarter square to Chiron, which is in the sign of Aries. It's ruled by that Mars in the sign of Cancer. Mars and Cancer is ruled by a Leo moon on this day. And a for first quarter square can create a fear around action. And so it is a place of needing to create action, even if there is fear of it. And the fear can stem from really diving into the emotional body, Mars and Cancer. And it's Chiron and Aries being ruled by this Mars. And Chiron and Aries can be where we need to be, like show up with warrior energy. It can be these wounds around feeling like we don't have self-leadership. Or especially with it being ruled by Mars and Cancer, it's this identity crisis for some or a lack of healthy self-identity where we felt powerless to act on, especially with the moon and Leo, while this is occurring, going after what our heart desires, like where also have we felt like we didn't have self-dignity or it was taken away from us. And so these wounds can come up revolving around these themes, especially also with the moon and Leo, wounds around childhood, where maybe a parent was projecting upon us instead of looking at us as intrinsic and unique and wanting us to be an extension of themselves. And it really made us feel powerless and affected our self-identity. So there are a lot of things that can be coming up and the need to act on diving into the emotional body and really exploring what this content is that is arising and really, really allowing ourselves to feel where we have felt pain before. Chiron is like the wounded healer. It's not an area where we can get rid of the wound, but it's an area where we can, it's always going to be tender. So it's like the memory, the emotional memory. We carry emotional memories. And we, with Chiron, we don't need to fix anything. We just need to feel it and through feeling it, we can then integrate what that means for us on a personal level and it promotes a certain medicine within. So it's like these, you know, emotional memories are held within our cellular body and with Chiron square, it's ruler. There's a need to not suppress what's going on. This can be a day where you could have felt like you moved past something, but something arises that, you know, touches on an old wound. And so there's a need to really embrace the emotional memories that are coming up and to really feel it in order to gain the medicine that is wanting to take place because an awareness comes through whenever we allow ourselves to feel I mean this is like you know you could hear you could hear a song or like smell a certain smell and it takes you back to a certain place in time and you recall where you felt wounded it's this type of energy and the the square in the new phase is there can be this crisis in action where, especially with Mars being in Cancer, where we want to suppress it, where it we feel like if I feel this, if I allow myself to feel these emotional dynamics surface, 
it's going to hurt too bad when really there is a lot of medicine there and allowing ourselves to recall where we have been wounded and to allow ourselves to sit with the emotions of what it evokes for us. The crisis in action in regard to this square is allowing ourselves, not allowing ourselves to do that. So this is a time where we are really called to to feel and to find the warrior energy within the courage to allow ourselves to feel that which we haven't wanted to feel. Maybe we weren't able to feel it in the past because we weren't allowed to. If we're dealing with cancer dynamics. Maybe growing up, our family, you know, especially with Mars here, it's like this, you know, more patriarchal um, conditioning around suck it up, get over it. And so it's really, especially with the energetics of this week, allowing ourselves to naturally, emotionally feel that which we have suppressed. And then through these other transits to really objectify what this type of conditioning has created, how it's affected our self-identity, how it's affected our emotional security, and then to learn how to reparent ourselves through doing so. It's interesting because when you have a first quarter square, it means that this has been being worked on for a significant amount of time. And the first quarter square is also, like I said, this crisis in action that correlates to the initial conjunction. So the initial conjunction of Mars and Chiron, when they conjunct or conjoined, that was back on like June 14th, June 15th of 2022. So think about what was going on in your life and just think about the archetypal nature of this Aries energy, of this wounding around self-identity, of this wounding around feeling powerless, of a wounding of feeling like you can't have self-leadership. You feel like you can't do it. You feel like you don't have a right to do it. It's kind of all of these dynamics. And so there's this call to be a warrior of discovering your own emotions within this for whatever it means on a personal level. And then on Saturday, Venus is going to be in a crescent sextile to Chiron, which is ruled by that Mars that it, it's squaring and um cancer and so like a, a crescent sextile really allows us to be able to integrate with more of an ease but there can still be a resistance there's this resistance around wanting to do what like the status quo or the consensus has taught us to do in regard to this. So we can see that we're dealing with our conditioning around our emotional dynamics and with Venus and Gemini ruled by Mercury retrograde and Taurus in a sextile to Chiron, which is squaring its ruler Mars really speaks to when we are, allow ourselves to feel and allow memories to be invoked. And then we get curious about how this correlates to how we're valuing ourselves. And we allow ourselves to utilize the feeling that is a bodily experience. Like maybe you hear a song and it takes you back to a place in time and you feel nervous energy you start to feel anxious. This is like this segue into 
allowing us to really act on exploring that emotion in order to integrate new ways to self-express instead of suppressing. So for people who have a lot of conditioning around the suppression of their emotions, this is a really, really great week to be able to integrate new ways of emotionally expressing ourselves and also tapping into what the feeling and sensory nature is and learning how to feel at home within our bodies because we're able to understand what they're telling us on an emotional level. And that way healing does get promoted. And then also we get to project this out into the world and be a mirror for others to feel like they're not alone and also that they can learn how to do the same thing just by us doing our own inner work and showing that. And so this is a week that is really getting us to explore and to intuit and to rely on our gut about how to naturally express ourselves, to understand how our conditioning has affected how we express ourselves, how it's affected how we talk to ourselves, how we value ourselves, how we express ourselves to others, how we reflect that out. It's also interesting to note with, and I'm going back, with Mars squaring Chiron, when it conjunct Chiron back in June 2022, mid-June, Venus was in Taurus and was conjunct the North Node, and Saturn was square the nodes at the time. And so we have all been learning how to inwardly relate by making the choice to, through that Saturn square, the nodes, but the resolution being the South Node at the time. And Saturn was in Aquarius back in June 2022. We were really meaning to be objective about our conditioning and how it affected our psychology and our security. And really to liberate from those conditioning factors in order to implement new ways of inwardly relating. And so we can see now that as we've been working on this, maybe some of us have been stagnating on that work. Or maybe something else is coming and circling back around, especially with Mercury retrograde going on, that was happening back then dealing with how we inwardly related and to be objective about our inner psychology and emotional dynamics and what constitutes our security and how we've been conditioned to look at our inner security. And now we are being called to really dive deeply into this emotional reality because a lot of us are getting the objective awareness about these dynamics. But in evolutionary astrology, we it is widely taught that you do not evolve through the analytics. We evolve through the emotional body. We evolve through meaning our most vulnerable places and being courageous about meaning ourselves there. And so whatever was happening back in June is now coming up this week and during this eclipse season. In order for us to now allow ourselves to really dive deeply into the depths of our emotions and to be a part of the swell of our emotional reality. And so I thought that it was really worth mentioning, especially in tandem, there is this call to act. It's a call of action. Transformation cannot occur just through the awareness. It is a segue, but at some point, we have to allow ourselves to feel 
whatever it is that we're meaning to feel. And things can be triggered at this time, especially during this eclipse season. In order to, for some of us, it's going to throw us back in on our emotional body because we've been repressing feeling this. And this week is a time to really do the inner work and to allow ourselves to, to do this on a deeper way, to listen to how we are inwardly relating and how it correlates to our emotions and where we have emotional wounding, where we feel vulnerable, where we feel the most vulnerable, where we've had trauma that has affected how we identify with ourselves and where some of that trauma, we might be overly identifying with one point of ourselves because maybe we're feeling shame or guilt and it's really not ours. It is conditioned and it affects the way that we value ourselves. So this is what I wanted to talk about. And this is a week to really understand how we're inwardly relating to ourselves, what our self-talk is, where these emotions stem from, the need to go into the emotional body, the need to look at our core wounding revolving around where we have over-identified with a certain part of our conditioning or all of it, and a need to really start to understand how it has affected our inner psychology and our emotional dynamics in order for us to really bring the full spectrum of awareness to it. That way we can liberate from these dynamics. That way we can have this radical alteration. Next week, whenever we have the lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Scorpio, there are not everyone, but there are a lot of people that whatever they've been resisting on an emotional and psychological level can really be brought to the forefront in order for them to deal with it. And this is a time to not resist evolution. It is a time to cooperate with it. And we will see it be projected out there. A lot of the people who are watching this, they are wanting to cooperate with evolution. We also know people who aren't wanting to cooperate with evolution because it affects their security. We feel secure in what is known and familiar. And so this is a week to really be looking at what constitutes what's known and familiar for me. And where are things becoming crystallized within my consciousness that I am needing to excavate out in order to create a new norm within? That way I can have this transformation that is needing to occur. At the very least, you are going to see other people have dynamics that they have resisted on an emotional and psychological level that gets brought to the surface. with. All of this that's that I'm talking about with this week in tandem leading up to next week's lunar eclipse in Scorpio, this is also looking at where we felt abandoned, where we felt like we've had the rug pulled up from underneath us, where we felt like we trusted someone and experienced a core wounding around that was not someone that we should have trusted. So there is a lot that can be coming up right now in regard to these scorpionic dynamics that are wanting to culminate during this lunar eclipse. This is also a full moon. So it's this culmination. And this week is really about diving in and things can be triggered for some of us, especially with Uranus and Mercury retrograde and Chiron in the mix, that allows us to cooperate with our evolution and get to the bottom of these dynamics of really learning discernment on whom to trust, whom not to, how our trauma has affected how we view ourselves, how we value ourselves, what beliefs that are conditioned that we've bought into that have affected how we value ourselves, what trauma created beliefs that have created an internal dialogue within 
that is getting in the way of us having healthy self-esteem and our security being able to emotionally validate ourselves. This is a week to really, really go deeply within. On a personal level, I have been really busy, but I am telling you, I have been taking so much time out It's one of the reasons why this is coming out today instead of yesterday. I am taking time out to really inwardly reflect on my prior dynamics and on the things that I am wanting to work on on an evolutionary level. It is a time to know when to go within and when to go out. If you are feeling like you have been around a lot of people and you haven't taken time for yourself, this is something that is going to catch up with you. We are all needing to carve time out to go deeply within right now. We are all needing to learn to listen to the inner voice about when to retreat and go within in order to connect more deeply with that inner voice. So that way we can understand ourselves on a deeper level. That way we can understand how our conditioning has impacted us. That way we can understand these emotional and psychological dynamics within that we're needing to change or to heal or to rebel against. This is a time to really continue to challenge the inner status quo and do that deep, deep work. There are things that are going to inevitably come up. Even after the the eclipse is in, Mercury is still going to be retrograde until May 15th, and then it's going to be in its shadow period for a couple more weeks. This is really sets the tone for the next six months, and it is imperative for all of us to listen to ourselves If we are wanting to really evolve our emotional dynamics and understand ourselves more deeply, that means that we have to cultivate the ability to listen to ourselves. That way we can assimilate the information that on a soul level, there's wisdom there, but we have to be willing to listen to it and willing to observe ourselves and observe where we have overly identified or become emotionally attached in some area and to have discernment around this in order to feel more self-sufficient, in order to be self-reliant, in order to also be our own authority in life. So I hope everyone has a really beautiful week. I am going to be posting a video um, For the EA view later on this week, it'll be posted on the EA Zoom meetings anyway. And I will be here to talk about the eclipse even more in depth next week. And I will be on this journey with all of you guys, and I hope to see you soon.